let's go to the current trends in academic publishing overlay journals. So as mentioned, I'll, I'll cover for Tommy Tenkan, and this is my presentation is partly based on Tommy's previous material, but also a, a preprint made by my author by me and Mikhail Lox from Hanken School of Economics. Uh, it's, it's available in archives, so you can, if you want further information, you can go 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 check check it out. But but yeah. So with um, I think when we talk about overlay journals and open access publishing in general, there's these three different kind of discourses. At least we can talk about this in the question and answer uh, section that are quite dominant. That we have the article case of open access where publicly funded research may, may be read and reused by general public, and then a lot of um, uh, a very important kind of discourse or talk is also the overall cost of scientific publishing. And I think overlay journals are, are, are often kind of, they are talked through the, the costs, like what are the costs, and, and hopefully that the model is a, a cost-efficient one, kind of seen as, as a cost-reducing model. At, at least that's Tommy and Surasanen's, uh, one of their aims was certainly to, to approach it from, from that perspective. And then also with regards to open access, there's this uh, notion of the academic reputation market and the roles of scientific journalists in projecting excellence. So uh, I think there's sometimes a bit of, um, there's the tension comes from, 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 uh, from trying to kind of both keep the, uh, keep the costs uh, uh, down, but also then the researchers, they still see some journals as, as, as an important sources of merit. So that's kind of where some of the tension lies. So within this presentation, I'll, I'll look at the cost, but also this kind of the, the rankings of overlay journals. So we'll, we'll address these both, um, both uh, topics here. And, and I must say that also re regarding the plan as what Katri will talk, I think the costs are, are, are kind of a key part in, uh, behind planners, I would I would say, but more more about that later on. So it, it was estimated that um, in in I think it was in 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 two thousand and and fifteen from 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 an uh, European uh, Library Consortium that 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 the yearly amount of uh, of money spent in in scientific publishing was. Uh, uh, that was already like uh, nearly a decade ago was was 7.5 billion euros and you could it's certainly a, a lot of money so the sum would be enough to fund fund uh, 150,000 to 200,000 postdocs every year so it's a very very uh, uh, um, a profitable business and, and there's so very much money involved in, in scientific publishing and I think this is kind of the, often the kind of take where the overlay model comes in. And that's what, how it's approached is that, um, that um, uh, previously uh, you would say that, uh, you would think that, um, that the open access journals kind of operate to some, to some extent with the, with the same model that was, was in, the, in, the, in the print, print based industry. So, so not that much has changed with the kind of this transformation to this uh, digital uh, realm and digital publishing. So, so some of the very basic principles are, are still there and that's, that's probably uh, why, at least partly why scientific publishing has come, have become so, so profitable in, 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 in the last years that, that the mechanisms are, are some, somewhat the same or are, are, then, are then inherited from that the print model. So and 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 so forth. Uh, uh, alternative that's this kind of alternative publishing models that do something very differently. That that actually um, uh, leverage the, the digital only and open access um, environments and technologies. Um, they they are they have been evolving, and, and one of them is the overlay model. And and um, as we look at into model more deeper, uh, the the argument often is that uh, it's a cost effective model of, of for journals as it piggybacks on the technology already provided by the digital repositories. But yeah, it's it's some, it's it's a different conception. Some uh, some articles refer to it them as deconstructed journals as they use different services for different purposes. So we can take a look how the overall journals work. So. First, you submit your paper to a preprint repository, for example, archive, um, and then you submit the link of your preprint to an overlay journal of your choice. 
And then there's the normal peer review process where you wait for the comments. And then after passing peer review successfully, the journal issues an article DOI and the final, maybe perhaps a final layout template and the volume and issue information. And then, then it is, uh, to our knowledge, it's often the authors that upload the new version of the manuscript to the repository, for example, archive. So the final version is available from archive and the overlay journal links to the final version of the, of the work and then creates the metadata uh, also or provides the metadata throughout their, their services like uh, the sciences or, or we can look at these, uh, these uh, the most common, common platforms shortly. So how does it look like? So here we have the journal. So or the open journal of astrophysics, you have the abstract, you have the, the bibliographic metadata, and then uh, it just pinpoints uh, to the article, to the full article, final article in, in, in archive. And in archive, it's it's really much the same same layout, but it um, it offers then the final final published version, and uh, and and kind of it also archives archives uh, the final version. It uses uses the uh, the repository functions as the as the digital backbone of the of of the of the journal, yeah, and hence overlay journal. So we wanted to know like uh, how many active overlay journals there are and, uh, and what, are their, what are their fields of sciences? How do they rank in journal metrics and, um, and uh, who are they published by? And do they co collect fees and, and which, type of, which type of licenses they, do they use? So I think for further reference, it's like the main platforms that provide these kind of overlay journal uh, services are episciences.org. That's maybe the most uh, most largest ones. Then we have Scholastica. And uh, we also searched from free journal network and open journals and PubPub and Wikipedia. PubPub is also very interesting if, if, if you're interested in the newest, newest, um, newest uh, trends in academic uh, publishing. Uh, we made the decisions that we did not include backbone-based venues to just F1000 Research and Open Research Europe as, as part of this study because they don't really use an external repository. Um, and we also excluded um, these um, the journals that publish uh, software that refer to GitHub as source code um, because they, they, they're a bit different entity in, in, in our view. And furthermore, and, and these are very interesting, these type of rapid review and annotation type venues. If you're familiar with rapid reviews COVID-19, I, I, uh, I suggest you, you, you check them out. So the, the, the idea is that, um, that uh, since preprints are not peer reviewed and, and, and there's no quality control, that there's this kind of rapid reviews done by, I think it was done by postdocs and, and, and PhD students of, of certain types of COVID-19 preprints. So there would be some kind of quality check on, on, on the preprints that are circulating about the topic. And it's a very interesting initiative. It's very much worth checking out if you haven't noticed it, but we excluded those as well because they're not really fully, could, in our view, considered as journals, right? Because there's no, the annotation is not peer reviewed and, and it's uh, not, not, a full, not a full publication in, in that sense. But let's take a look at the results of, of the small study that we did. So I think that's significant. There were only we were only in 535 of currently active overlay journals. So th th there's not that many, quite not much of, of them yet. Um, so here you can see the total article output for overlay journals per research field category um, for for years of, of 18 to 21. So uh, uh, the largest amount of articles are published in um, physical sciences and computer sciences, and, and the number there represents the amount of journals that contribute to these figures. So we can see here that computer sciences and physical sciences, uh, there's, there's four journals that produce quite many articles in, in physical sciences, whereas in the computer information sciences, there's a, uh, those are the largest. Mathematics is, is then... Uh, Quite, uh, then the third largest one, and they. Uh, um, this is not surprising because because uh, archive definitely plays a role. Uh, archive was one of them. We can look at we will look at those repositories later. But but the natural sciences are 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 um, 
are, are big in within the list of journals. Um, uh, if you look at, if you go to archive and, and search uh, with overlay journals, you should find out preprint and, and there's the link to the data where you can see the full list of journals. If you are interested in, in, in checking out all the journals that we had identified, it's available in Senodo and you can, uh, I can post it in here maybe later. And here's the repositories that they used. So um, Harksai, uh, birth, oh, I should mention still that it's a quite recent development that, that, that there are journals uh, also that use the overlay model beyond natural sciences. So it started to emerge in basic medicine and, 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 and medical sciences, and, uh, but also in economics and business. And, um, uh, and, and other fields, mechanical engineering. So I think this was quite new. At least I found some paper, I think it was a couple of years ago that said that there's not really much initiatives beyond natural sciences, but this has, I think this has changed at least compared to their results. And now there are initiatives in, in different fields and, 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 and fields other than natural, natural sciences. But again, the full list of journals can be I can link it to the chat. So this is also, I think, interesting. So what are the preprint repositories that, that the current journals use? So archive was, uh, they could accept uh, submissions from many, many repositories. Um, archive was the most popular, 74% um, uh, of, of the journals accepted uh, preprint submissions from archive, but also the French Hall, which is uh, in fact multidisciplinary repository covers diverse covers diverse fields of sciences was the second second most um, um, uh, frequently accepted repository and I think that kind of gives us a hint that that the journals are also broadening their scope because Hall definitely is a, a multidisciplinary repository and then the other options were quite rare so med archive and pseudo archive and the archive the instances were quite rare but again, it's just started to uh, spread in the fields beyond natural sciences. So that's not, maybe that, that's surprising. And then we look at the uh, impact factor ranks and, and Finnish publication forum ranks and, and Danish ranks and Norwegian journal uh, rankings and, and how, how the journals fared in, in those. And um, um, I think the, the Impact factor-wise, um, the open journal for quantum science was, was ranked the highest. It was actually the fourth in quantum science and technology, and it had a pretty high impact factor, close to seven. And um, so it can kind of resembles that, I, I, affirms that also these overlay journals can in, in fact fare well in these traditional journal metrics. You, you know, you can be against them or, or uh, you can, Think that they're good or bad I, that's that's another debate but it seems like also overlay journals can uh, they can fare well well in those as well um i think it's fairly interesting if you look at the finnish um, finnish categorization for for journals that there's like this one or basic class now if you omit all journals that have recently converted into the overlay model. They, there's been channels for like Eli from biology. And um, so then all the, if you omit the recently transferred journals uh, from economics and, 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 and biological sciences, then every, every journal that scored uh, one came from the national science, not natural sciences. So it was either from physics or, or maths or, or computer sciences. So it seems that, uh, it seems that the most established journals still, still come from, from, from natural sciences with drugs, but, but with, with regards to overlay journals, but that as, as you can see, it's, it's, about to, it's about to change. And, and, and for example, eLife is, I think is a very interesting journal that has, has a very high impact factor that's recently converted into the, to the model to the overlay model or, or, or requires preprints to be, to be um, uh, submitted via, via that repository. But again, it's the whole study is in archive. If you want to uh, look at it in, in, in detail, I guess I could present as a summary before we go to questions is that, okay, the overlay model, it's still quite 
uh, the amount is small compared to the overall number of open access journals, but, but the number is currently increasing. And, and they, they definitely the current journals are definitely skewed towards computer sciences, mathematics, and physical sciences. But there's a recent kind of recent uh, develop in recent developments, they, they have been also the initiative have been taken or the model has, has been adopted also in other fields. And um, this is, we did not yet address this, but they are also that overlay journals are commonly published by groups of scientists rather than formal organizations or commercial publishers, uh, which is, which um, it, they are quite easy to set up as journals and, and the cost of running them are, are, are um, seems to be quite low, which is reflected in that nearly, nearly all of the investigated journals did not charge any fees from the authors or readers. And I think this is at least partly due to the, to the cost effectiveness. Yeah, in, um, um, in, in larger scale, both the adoption of open access preprint repositories and, and the willingness to publish in overlay journals, um, they will then determine the model's wider impact on on scientific publish. But I, I kept my presentation um, intentionally quite short so uh, so we can go to Katris, but I think I think we could pause the recording now.